Hey everybody, Freddy here with another video. This time we're going to be focusing on Azure Express Route. We're going to be talking about how to connect an, an on-prem data center to Azure Cloud through the use of an Express Route circuit. We're going to be talking about what the MSCE is and how you can connect that Express Route. We're going to be talking about the VGW, which is the Virtual Network Gateway. We're going to be talking about the connections, the routing, how the VGP connections take place and how the routing takes place when you introduce an NVA, which is a network virtual appliance, which typically is a firewall that you run in a hub and spoke configuration. So there's a, a lot to cover, so let's get to it. I wanna to talk to you about an, the express route and what the express route is. In this case, we have an on-premises network that we see here on the left-hand side. This typically is a, a data center or an office or something that you have that where you have your, off, your servers and typically you have routers. And in this case, you can see on-premises routers. These routers are usually the ones that are going to connect to the express route circuit and then that's going to connect into the Microsoft routers. This Microsoft routers, as you can see here where it says Azure, this is typically a data center as well. Remember the cloud is a cloud, but still there are data centers. So in this case, we have an Azure data center, which is in a region, which is in an availability zone. So this is a physical data center and inside of the data center, there are some routers. And that's what these routers are here, the ones that you see. This is also what we're gonna be looking at that is called the MSEE. -E. We're gonna be looking at that in a minute, but just keep that in mind. That is the MSEE, -E, which is the Microsoft Edge routers. And those are the ones that terminate the BGP connections. So your on-premises routers and the MSEE, -E. typically when you buy or when you subscribe to an express route circuit, you get two circuits. One is the primary, one is the secondary. How you configure those on your router is really up to you. Microsoft recommends that you configure them in a primary secondary configuration so you have redundancy. However, you can configure them in a load balance type configuration, but again, you don't have redundancy at that point. The only thing though is if you have, let's say you buy a one gigabit per second link, you get two because of redundancy and you configure that you can configure that in a load balancer which in essence gives you two but again it's not advisable because you have no redundancy so what that is this is one way to look at it another way to look at the express route is something like this where you have your still your, you still have your data data center here somewhere a physical location but in this case, you have a partner edge, and typically this is something like, like Equinix. This is the one that provides you the link. So in this case, the customer network is in a location. You find the closest location to you, and this is also called the Meet Me location. The Meet Me location is the, the physical location where those routers can be from the ISP and how you get to that partner that's a different connection configuration is not part of the express route circuit express route gives you a primary connection secondary connection that can go to this meet me location again this meet me location you're going to hear that as well then you have the Microsoft Edge again these are the the routers that you would find in a Microsoft data center also the MSCE so in this case, this express route can give you access through what is called the Azure private peering. That gives you access to your VNet configurations. Again, it can be one VNet, it can be multiple VNets, it can be one VNet and one subscription and another VNet and a different subscription. This is really up to you. But this is, gives you access to the private IP ranges, like a 192.168, a 10.10 .10 or 10. something. This is what that gives you. There also, it also gives you access through Microsoft Peering and it gives you access to your Office 365, the Dynamics 365, GitHub, you know, Power BI, those type of services, you can access them through the Microsoft Peering. Um, and there's also public peering, but 
Microsoft peering is the one that is typically the one that is configured for you to get access to those services. Again, what to keep in mind is this Microsoft Edge and the Partner Edge as well, also known as the Meet Me. Moving forward. So what is Express Route? There's multiple Express Routes that you can choose from. So for example, there is Express Route Local. Express Route Local is local to one geographical location. It gives you access typically to one region or multiple or main or two regions, but it's very specific. It's, I usually think of it as giving you access to one region. So if you say US West, so if you ask for an express route into US West, what that means is that your connection is gonna go into that region only, and which means a data center in that region. Your MSCE will be in that region, a data center in that region as well. That's the express route local. Then if you need access to more regions, you would go into maybe a, a standard express route standard. That one gives you access to a geopolitical area. So for example, all regions in North America, US West, US West 2, US West 3, US East, US Central, all of that you can get access to using a standard. One of the things that I forgot to mention in the express route local is express route local is not metered, which means that you can transfer as much data as you want. And that data is pretty much covered by the monthly payment of that express route. Express route standard typically is metered, which means that you get charged on data coming from Azure to your on-prem location. You don't get charged for data going into Azure, but data coming out of Azure, it is charged. So keep that in mind. Then the other one is Express Route Premium. Express Route Premium is the one that gives you access to all regions. It doesn't matter where, globally, pretty much. So that's the, the three different ones. There's also another one that is called the Express Route Direct. This one is it's the most expensive one because it gives you access to the direct, it's, it's a direct connection into Azure. It's typically 10 gigabits or 100 gigabits. Those are the only two options. If you need encryption down to the wire, automatic, you can go with a direct one. Um, all of that information is down here in this link that is on the bottom. That is pretty much the, the options that you have when you have Express Route. So let's go into the solution diagram and what we're going to be, what I'm going to be demoing today. What I'm going to be demoing today is a solution that includes two subscriptions and it includes one subscription has an express route. The other subscription does not have an, an express route, but needs access to the data center. So I'm going to show you how that's done. So pretty much what we have is we have a tenant contoso.com in this case, we have a subscription B and in that subscription, we have a VNet called prod VNet. And inside of that VNet, we have a subnet where all my servers are. And inside of that subnet, um, well, we have servers, but we also have a data center in Los Angeles with this IP address. As you can see, the IP addresses are different because you cannot have overlapping ranges because the routing is not going to work. Remember, this is all routing. This is all BGP routing. So ranges cannot overlap. So in this case, the data center in Los Angeles has a range of IP addresses that is different than the ones that you see here on the prod VNet. So you also have an express route. Remember here, this right here is the meet me point. Um, this is what, you know, ISP would be giving you. You don't have to worry about it because this is the ISP doing it. However, this is there still. So you also have a firewall or I have a firewall subnet in this case, which is the 10.5. And my, my goal is that traffic flows through that sub through that firewall, as we say, east to west, meaning horizontally data that is moving from the left to the right or data flowing within this, this section is going to flow through that firewall. And that's what we're going to set up. So that means that we need a gateway subnet on that VNet. And we also need a VGW or a virtual gateway that is going to connect into that express route. 
What is not shown here though is the MSCE. The reason it's not shown here is because you don't see it in your portal. It's not something that you see, however, it is there. And the reason I'm going to write it here is just because you will see later what how it works. Remember, the MSCE is the set of routers or the edge routers that are in a data center that are connecting this express route and your VGW connects into that MSCE. I also have another subscription. This subscription doesn't have access to the express route. However, this is what I want to do. I want to give access to this subscription to the data center in Los Angeles using that, ex that exact same express route. In this subscription, I have a VNet, different IP address. Remember, no overlapping IP addresses, which I have a subnet, with, which, ser which has servers as well. The servers do get access to the internet through Microsoft. Uh, this is how it is set up right now. And I do have a gateway subnet as well. And I also set up a VGW because I need to have a VGW in order to connect to that express route. So that is pretty much what I have here. As you can see, there's a couple things to pay attention. The MPLS network does have access to the internet as well as my connection from, excuse me, my connection here has internet access. All right, so let's move forward. Uh, data center in Los Angeles. So what I'm gonna do, the, the goal is for this servers in this subnet to get access to the data center through this express route. The key here is that I'm going to be sending the traffic through what is called an NVA or a network virtual appliance, which is this firewall here. One of the things that I can do with this design is if I don't have an NVA, if I don't have a network virtual appliance, I can set up a virtual gateway here and I can set up a connection to this express route. It, it is a, in a different subscription, which means that I need to get an authorization in order to use it. And that would work just fine. That means that the, that the traffic would flow through the MSCE to the data center in Los Angeles. So the traffic would flow from this subscription. If this subscription is in a different region, that means that the traffic would flow through the, back, through the Microsoft backbone to the MSCE down to the express route into the data center. That's one way to do it. But if I have an NVA, then what I need to do, because I, I don't want the traffic to flow to the MSCE, then up this way into this subnet, into the firewall, then out of the firewall, down to the VGW, back to the express route, into the data center. That would be way too many steps. So what I, what I want to do is I want to set up what we called a VNet peering. A VNet peering is what allows me to, to connect these two VNets together. Now the traffic flows through that VNet peering, even though I still have my VGW connected to the MSCE here, um, but the traffic prefers the peering because it's, it's more stable, it's faster, I guess, but the traffic just prefers the VNet peering. So the traffic will flow through the VNet peering to the firewall and then the firewall will send it to the data center in Los Angeles. So that's pretty much what we're gonna be doing. There is some, um, uh, there's a checklist that we're gonna go through just to make sure that we understand how this is gonna take place. Uh, the checklist is we're gonna create a VNet peering connection between the new VNet and the prod VNet, which is the new VNet and the prod VNet. Then we're gonna add a connection from the new VNet VGW to the express route. Again, because it's in a different subscription, you need to get an authorization. This, this is a must, otherwise you cannot get a connection between subscriptions unless you have an authorization. Then you create two route tables. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create two route tables in the new VNet, and these two route tables are going to be configured 
to route the, the route the, to route the traffic. The first thing in the route table is this 0 .0 0.0.0. This 0.0.0.0 .0 that says it's going to go to the internet. What this is doing is it's making sure that this continues to work. So we're not going to send traffic to the internet through the firewall. It's just east-west traffic, not north-south traffic, if that makes sense. So we're going to, so the, in order to do that, we need to have this, this entry here. Then the next thing we're going to do is we are going to have a 10.8, which means the destination, 10.8. Go back here. The 10.8 is somewhere here in the data center, 10.8. So that means the destination and it's going to go to the firewall. 10.5.2.4 is the firewall. So in other words, any traffic going to 10.8 is going to go through the firewall. Propagate route table, we're going to say no because this one is going to be assigned to the server subnet. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to create another route table. It's called, it's, it, this is called the VGW route table. This is going to be assigned to the gateway subnet. In this case, we're going to say 10.1.0.0 slash 16 go to the firewall. One thing that is interesting here though, if you, if you remember the 10.1 is this IP address. So in this route table, we're telling this subnet here, if you need to get to this IP address, go to the firewall. And again, the firewall is the one that knows about this table here. And it doesn't really make sense at first because you're thinking, okay, but this sub subnet knows about the server subnet, right? It knows about the 10.1 because it's right next to it. It's right in the same VNet. So it doesn't really make sense until you realize that you need to say propagate table yes. You need to say propagate table equals yes because when you propagate the table and you set this to propagate, that means that this route table will propagate to this, will propagate down to here. So it'll propagate everywhere. So in other words, when, when, a, when a server here in the data center says, Oh, I need to get to 10.1.1.1 or 10.1.1.4. How do I get there? And the routing table is going to say, oh, you need to go to the firewall. So when this route table that has been propagated sees that, then the traffic goes up to the firewall. The firewall knows about this and it sends it the, the proper way. So again, this route table, this route table here, is not for that gateway or that subnet, it's actually for the other subnets. So they know how to get to this new subnet that you created. This is the reason why you set it to propagate equals yes. So as, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna assign this server route table to the server subnet and the VGW route table to the gateway subnet. Because again, there is a VNet peering connection, the traffic is going to flow through the VNet peering connection. And it's, this is how this whole thing is going to be tied together. All right. So now that we went through all the little details about this whole connection, now let's get into the demo. Let's go to the portal and let's set some of this stuff up. I may not be able to do everything because I do not have an MPLS circuit, but I will be able to do the route tables and show you how that is done. So that is the end of part one of this video series. Please check out the next video to see the details on how to configure everything in the portal. So for now, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you on the next one.